Picture the scene some 44 years ago in the little town of Zeltweg, home since 1964 of the Austrian Grand Prix. Dark storm clouds gather again over the mountains. The ultra-quick circuit is still greasy slick from morning rain, yet everyone is lining up on dry tyres. James Hunt is on the pole for McLaren. Also on the front row, the very fast, neat and precise John Watson at the wheel of the Jeff Ferris-designed Penske PC4. Ahead, the infamous long right-hander, flat out in top gear, even with cold tyres and a full load of fuel. Exactly a year before, the Penske team had lost their star driver, Mark Donoghue, on exactly this corner. For Watson, an integral part of Penske's rebirth, this was a moment etched in time. I mean, it was a difficult moment for everybody in the grid because we all had the same issue to contend with. I suppose by being at the front of the grid and getting into the Hellenink, I think it was the Hellenink corner? Well, Hellenink was the top of the hill, but okay. then the right-hander after that didn't really have a name. Okay. It was just the quick It was a, quick, right it was a flat out corner. Yeah. And in those conditions, and we didn't have the benefit of tyre warmers, and we would have only had an outlap. So there's a modicum of temperature in the tyre. So I, I think the cautious approach albeit that you're at the front of a grid, but everybody would have had the same view. Mm. And we all got through it, I think. But because the track was patchier in places, not every bit was wet or semi-wet, semi-dry. So you, the first there would catch whatever was the condition and either would benefit or lose out of it. So in the early laps of the race, the, the, the lead changed quite a number of times. Yeah. I don't know why, maybe just some people were felt better prepared well, better can I suggest forward. you were in front but because you're in front you don't actually know what's ahead of you whereas you're behind as Ronnie and Jody were it was slightly easier to judge their pace and what you were doing yes and indeed. you were a, in a way you were a marked man at that well point. I was the pathfinder yeah. I mean, for want of another phrase yeah. or word so I mean as I mentioned over the the next number of laps the lead rotated amongst four or five of us and then gradually the track dried out and inevitably, uh, as history has it, I managed to get into the lead and consolidated the lead and, and took the chequered flag. Just a very short phrase there, but it actually sums up a multitude of different things that were going on, because to get the lead, you not, you not only had to pass Jody Schechter in the Six World Tyrrell, which you did relatively, I think, coming out of the last corner from memory, but Ronnie was something else, because Ronnie was always going to be good regardless of the conditions. And you got him, I think, going into that downhill left-hander. And you had to go offline to do it. But I remember talking to you after the race, and you said, I knew I could do it because I passed in there in, in, in testing the week before. I mean, I don't remember precisely which driver in which corner it I was. It was a spooky made place to pass Ronnie Peterson. Well, Ronnie, I mean, I suppose every driver at that day was at a very high level. Ronnie was always one of the, the highest of those, and particularly in difficult conditions. I don't know why on that particular day I seemed to have the, the blessing of somebody. And I was able to pass Ronnie and I had to pass James and had to deal with others on the circuit as well. The other thing from that race, of course, was you deciding afterwards to shave your beard off. Whether you decided that on the slowdown lap or whether you'd said to yourself three years previously, I will shave it off if I win a Grand Prix. The, the foundation for the beard being removed was principally during the discussions with Roger about driving for him in 1975, the end of 75, and then for the 76 season, and one assumed for the remaining seasons, was that I knew that Roger was no big fan of facial hair. <laughs> and, uh, in fact, any hair that was longer than you know, a, a Marine in the U.S. military would have been not really the norm. Mm. Roger never asked would I shave the beard, but I'd had it for a number of years, and I was feeling it's about time maybe I should take the beard off, but to do it at the point of signing a contract with Roger, maybe people would have assumed that I'd been told to shave it. So in terms, it wasn't so much a case of losing a beard, it might have been a case of losing face. So I said in the contract, in the, in the discussions, I said, Roger, when we win a Grand Prix, I will shave my beard, I will give you that undertaking. So it means that I don't have a loss of face, you don't have to ask me, it gives both of us motivation. Just a loss of facial hair. Loss of facial hair. So um, no, none of us loses anything, and we all gain out of it. And simply, that evening, we flew back to London, and Roger was flying out on Monday morning back to the States. So we stayed at an airport hotel, uh, going to meet in the morning for a breakfast meeting, and then Roger would be on his way. I went up to my room, unpacked, went into the bathroom, took out a pair of scissors because it needed to be trimmed before it could be shaved, 
and then shaved the beard that evening. I did it literally uh, as soon as I arrived in the hotel bedroom. I came down the following morning into the coffee room, the coffee shop, and I was down before Roger and Heinz Hofer, the team manager of the team, they came down together. And I remember sitting there and looking around and seeing Roger and Heinz, and I remember Roger's voice saying to Heinz, where's Watson, where's Watson? <laughs> And I sat and sort of didn't look at them directly, but looked slightly away and said, over here, Roger, over here. Because <laughs> they knew the voice, but they couldn't see me. And I stood up or something. And then, of course, the penny dropped and they realized that they had got a, a, a clean-shaven Grand Prix driver at last. <laughs> <laughs>